Well, welcome everybody. I'm Dan Conger. I'm Baseline's training manager, and this is another episode of Tech Talk Tuesday. Today is all about water sources. So specifically, the title is Managing Secondary Water Sources During Drought. It's a lot of mouth, it's a, it's a mouthful. It's actually a very narrow topic, but I kind of want to make sure that we broaden that as well. So I want to, let's just talk about drought and water sources. So first, first as we start off with, um, there, you may have multiple water sources that you deal with on your site. You, you know, here in the West, a lot of what I deal with is, is just a single water source as a domestic meter. And it's probably common. You move to other markets, that's not the case, right? Well, what happens when you have an additional water source this is really kind of a pain in the butt to use. It's like, I, I, you know, I only have 500 gallons out of this tank or I only get, I can only get a thousand gallons a month from this source, disregard it because it's a big pain. Well, I want to make sure that you know how to automate that and to simplify that system and to manage those other water sources. Because if we're in a drought, that becomes really, really important to take advantage of all those water sources. Don't exceed the capacity of certain water sources if, if that's the case and manage that and make that as painless for you as possible. That's, that's my goal for here today. And then what you can do is you can extrapolate what we talk about today and bring that into just managing other water sources just in general, right? Not just for drought, but I think the drought just kind of sharpens that and puts a fine point on the, the why you should do this and the, the, on that one. So let's jump into my content that I've got today. Uh, we're going to kind of go back and forth between some slides that I have, and then we're going to look at some, some uh, base manager as well. So let's start off by talking about different types of water sources. So I mentioned that I use domestic water sources here, um, like a typically a, a, a domestic meter here in, in the West. Um, you move to other places and that's not the only one. The, the subs, subset of this one might be um, pressurized uh, irrigation water, or sometimes called PI. Um, it's actually raw water that's not treated. My water is chlorinated and fluoridated and pressurized. We use that for domestic use or we use it for irrigation. Okay. Um, maybe you're getting water from a tank. So, and the, that tank could be um, a rain catchment. It could be air conditioner condensate, right? That's a, that's such a fine, fine, um, minute area. That's like, wow, who uses that? Well, if you use a lot of air conditioning in a moist climate, you're going to have some condensation. Why would you do that? It's not really a cost effective, right? The tank is going to cost more than the water you'd ever save, but there might be other political reasons or lead reasons why do you use that. So a tank could be a water source. Maybe you're going to get water. You're going to use a pump as your water source. So you're pumping it from a well, or you could be pumping it from surface water, right? Now, surface water is an enormous category. Surface water could be canals, could be ponds, lakes, um, catchments, all these different different uh, forms of water sources. So the reason I brought this up in the beginning is a single base station 3200 can manage eight different water sources. So I've only listed four. You may only have one, you may have two, but you could manage up to eight of them. So kind of keep that in mind. So we can get into some complex hydraulics. Well, as we get into, if you, if you do have multiple water sources, you may want to prioritize them. You may want to rank them one over another, one over another. So in base manager here, I'm showing that this is my one water source is an inch and a half domestic meter. And this is ranked at water source priority five. So I've got, if I could have eight different water sources, I can rank them from highest to lowest, the lowest being the last one I'm going to use and the highest, the first one I'm going to use. So we could just sequentially work through them. Now, since I see a lot of domestic meters, I see parks, a city park that, that might have three domestic meters all feeding a looped mainline. Well, in that case, they want to pull from those three domestic meters at the same rate and they'd set them all at the same priority. So they could set them at priority five, they could set them at priority four, just as long as it all matches and it will pull equally. Well, I'm going to dive deeper into it. And I want to look at what happens if we change that priority. If we set one at priority five and another one at priority six, what will happen in that circumstance is it will use the, the lowest priority, the smallest number first. And then if need be, it will switch to the next uh, 
uh, priority water source. So if we've got a five, it would switch to the six if need be, and then it switched to the seven sequentially all the way down. So a question, question I'd be interested to hear in the chat is, tell me the different water sources that you have in your market, right? Because So find the chat, drop some info in there. It'd be really, what was really interesting for me is um, I cut my teeth and I did almost all of my work here in the West, um, California, Arizona, Nevada, maybe a little bit of Oregon. And it wasn't until I joined Baseline that I got a chance to really see what's going across the entire country. And it was really kind of fascinating to see the different water sources and what's more common, right? So, the, and then what is the preferred water source? So that's what water source priority is, is which one do you prefer? So if I've got a domestic meter and I've got a well, which one do I want to use for first? Okay, so there we go. So it might be that I'm using a tank as my primary water source. And so it could be a, whatever that rain catchment tank or, a, or maybe it's just a holding tank, right? It's a tank that we, we have water, it's primary. And what we can do with this water source priority is say that is more important, use that one first. Well, we could also then, if transition over to a secondary water source, in this case, a domestic meter, we prefer the tank, higher priority, the domestic water meter is a lower priority. So that's what water priority is all about. And by the way, partway through, we're gonna, I'm gonna go back in and show you the programming I did on these and we'll take, a, I'll bring these all together. So John, John says that he uses a reservoir, wells, lakes, rivers. So lakes and rivers are gonna call, put those in the same category of surface water, um, a rain collection. So rain collection could go into a category. So, Wow, so he's got one, two, three, four, five different water sources, and he could rank each one of those. He could say, this is most important, and this one is the least important, and rank them one through five, right? Ron uses, Ron uses um, pumps, and because I know, I know they're in Florida, right? A lot of, lot of uh, groundwater or surface water, right? Greg's comment is, um, People are using, ah, reclaimed water distribution, right? That's one of my other water sources I hear, have here in the West is um, we, we mark it as purple. Sometimes we just call it purple water. So it's pressurized, but it's, um, has, it has different qualities, right? It's not the same water quality that I'm gonna get from my domestic meter, even though it's pressurized. So I'm gonna rank my priority, perhaps off of water quality, perhaps off, off of availability, okay? So water source priority. We can also do what's called a water source empty condition. So far, this is all about water sources. So a water source con empty condition is saying, if this water source is empty, it can't be used. So here, down here at the bottom, I am basing a water source empty condition off of a sensor. And I'll show you what that list of drop-down sensors are. And this particular one is a pressure sensor. So I'm saying when the pressure uh, is less than five PSI, wait for 60 minutes. So it's gonna discontinue it for 60 minutes. So any, any thoughts on, well, let's see, five PSI translates into several feet of water. So we'll, we'll kind of look at them, we'll do, the, do some math, and some science on elevation and uh, feet of water in there. But we're saying under, under five PSI, discontinue this water source and check it another 60 minutes. Now this is currently set the water source priority two. So if I have a water source priority three, well, while this is in its empty condition, it would go to the next water source. If I don't have another water source, we stop watering, everything pauses. But if I, since we're talking about ranking them, it would move down the line to the next water source. Okay, so be thinking about that rain catchment tank that might be empty some of the times, this is one of those tools we're gonna to use to, to kind of work through these. Okay, so I've got a 60 minute wait time. So here's some, here's some of the, the sensors that we might use. So in the tank, one sensor we might use is a soil moisture sensor, right? So this is a picture of, of a, a contraption, a, a test rig that I set up in my backyard um, when I could go and it's all, well, I'm always always been home. I couldn't. I never went in the office. But something I I set up here at home, and it was testing uh, soil moisture sensors as level indicators. So in this column of water, simulating a tank, I've got a 
seven foot tall column of water and I've got increments every, every foot. So in here, I've got it at one foot of water in there, add a little bit of coloring to make it pop out. And I, based off of the moisture content off of that sensor, when it drops down to one foot, I said, this water source is empty. So I'm, I can use a soil moisture sensor. That's one, one thing that we can use. Pros and cons on that one? Well, um, probably it's very accurate. Soil moisture sensors, you might have some around. One of the, the, the things to kind of keep in mind, it, it does give you, it's a narrow range, right? Because the sensor is 15 inches long. So anywhere over that 15 inch range, you've got very, very good control over it. You're outside of that 15 inch range, it's invisible. So you can't see, but that's one way of doing it. Pressure is another way of doing it. So I hear I'm showing the pressure transducer on that same rig. Um, we're missing, we can't quite see the um, 50, the BL5406 transducer. It's just off screen, but I've got that. So what's nice about this one is a couple of things that are really nice about using pressure for a tank leveling is I just need a threaded connection. And what I can do is now I can say that um, I have at one pound of pressure, I can say uh, it's empty, but at 10 pounds of pressure, it's full. So I can see, I can see across that entire range based off of pressure. So, so, so I'm looking, seeing Ron's comment. He's talking about he's using, oh, he's using two different pumps. Okay, good. So he could rank one pump over the other if you need to be. And um, they're using one to slowly start to fill the main. That, I like that. I think that's a great idea. Beautiful. So let me, um, I wanted to, come off a of share and show you a couple of things. So the hardware that we're actually talking about, right? So, so the one is the concept is using the soil moisture sensor, right? So it um, comes with a 50 foot lead, I've chopped mine off. But what we're doing is turning that vertically and just taking a moisture reading when, the, when that moisture content gets to a certain level, we don't care what the moisture content is, right? Because this is gonna read in percentage of moisture content. So, you know, 33, 35%, it's close, it's close to the top and, you know, might be reading 5% or 2% down here. I don't care what that number is. All I care is when it hits this level every single time, whatever that number is. So if it reads 18.9%, 18.9% is what I'm going to put in and say, that's when my tank is empty because now I'm down to the last little bit of water. So talk about soil moisture sensors. The other piece of hardware we're looking at is the 5406 kit. So this is the pressure transducer, right? That's been around for in the industry for quite some time. And then we've got a, the bicoder on here. So the 5406, this is a zero to 150 PSI range transducer. It reads all the way up to 150 PSI. But what's really kind of fascinating, this is what I did in my, my backyard experiment, is it, um, I brought, got a 5406 transduce uh, 5406 bicoder only and i was able to use a lake level transducer and i didn't know lake level transducers till i started playing around with them and i thought there was something really magic about them and i realized it is just a pressure transducer and has that same threaded fitting here it's exactly the same this one is this one um comes with a 40 foot cord and this reads from zero to five psi and side note, this remember this reads zero to 150. I thought this was gonna be a lot more accurate. And turns out it is a little bit more accurate, but not for tank leveling, it doesn't really matter. So, but the big reason to use this one is right, I can hang it. So it's about mounting. If, if you know, this is nice and heavy, it'll weight on a, on a cord. So, um, but lake level transducers or anybody else's transducer, right? We can start bringing those in and being creative with how you're going to mount it or create creative with your pressure range. Okay. Let's see what else we got. So I've got a little bit more. And cool. The other thing that comes into play, another water source empty condition could be based off of a event switch. So this is the 54 BL 5402 event bicoder. So this is a pump station that's um, quite large. Um, I think it's a 10 inch output could reach upwards of 1800 GPM, which is way out, outside the range of anything I've ever dealt with. But this pump stations like this, 
may have their own control systems, may have their own indicator um, lights or indicator switches that give you information out. Well, how do I get that third party switch or third party light to influence my baseline system? We can use that, that 5402 event bycoder that could indicate the, the condition of someone else's switch. So now I can connect, I have the possibility of connecting an event bycoder to indicate the switch and then have it influence my water source since we're specifically talking about water sources. Last thing we're gonna take a look at is water source budget. So still in base manager under water sources. So this is my inch and a half domestic meter. Here, I've set a 50,000 gallon budget for the month and I've selected shutdown. So what that means is when I have used more than 50,000 gallons for, through this domestic meter, through this inch and a half meter, more than 50,000 gallons in a 30 day month, it does two things. It alerts me because I've put in the 50,000 gallons. I get a, a message and it discontinues this water source. Okay, now this is water source priority five. Do I have a water source priority six? Yeah, if I do, it'll just roll right onto that next six and I don't have to mess with it. It's gonna do it all on its own. So, okay, so that's water, water source budget. So we're gonna bring this all together in a site study and then we'll see, I'll show you how I program this one. So this particular site has three water sources. So we've got a domestic meter. I've got a small pond and I've got a rain catchment tank. So I've got those three water sources. And here's how they, they have prioritized the water sources. They've said that the rain catchment tank is the most important water source. We wanna use that up every single time. Anytime there's water in there, use it up. And the domestic meter is the second priority because it's available, it's clean, um, it's got good pressure. And then the third backup source is gonna be that pond. Now, this is the prior, the way they're prioritized that's based purely on your personal preferences and your, or your owner's preferences, whatever, whatever you want. It's not based off of what we want. And it, actually it's not based off of the order in which they're placed in there. You're gonna change, you're gonna set the priority yourself. So the reason the rain catchment is priority one is this is in a demonstration area. So they wanna show um, homeowners and other businesses that we use, this is one way of conserving water. The tank is really small. They only have rain part of the year, but anytime there's water in there, use it up. That's priority one. Well, I can't even get through an entire irrigation cycle. Then it's just gonna automatically switch to priority two, the domestic meter. Now the domestic meter, um, they, they're gonna stop using that at a certain point because water starts getting expensive. So they wanna stay out of tier three rates. So tier one, tier two are affordable, tier three, don't want. So let's switch from that over to the pond. And the pond is, I don't wanna say it's limitless, but the pond can be used as much as they want without any repercussions. The, but the reason that pond is rated third is because they don't have good filtration and it's really hard. They're gonna to have to do a lot more clean out on the system. But so the order that here is tank, meter, pond. Okay, so let's, let's, um, Let's do, let's do set that up and I'll show you how I have that programmed. So I'll go back to my base manager. I need to log back in to base manager. And so today I'm really pleased with the way today's going. My uh, internet service provider was down this morning when I went to log in for my meeting and it kind of, I had a bit of a panic. So. I'm doing this all for my hotspot and I'm really pleased it's working well. Okay, so let's go to base manager. And then we will jump to the flow setup. Okay, let's get this. And so we're gonna go to water sources. And so under water sources, we can see that we have, oh, we got to, got to get to the right controller. We missed that. Sites and controllers. this isn't going to work. Oh my goodness. I just realized what happened today because I don't have an internet connection. 
my controller doesn't have <laughs> son of a god all right well we're gonna have to go back to we're gonna have to back up my controller that is connected to the internet doesn't have an internet connection so i can't show you my base manager connection we're gonna we're gonna adjust on the fly let's go back and take a look at my base manager setups hmm we're gonna have to adjust well we're gonna have to have to adjust so the way I pro I'm going to have to describe the way I program this. So what I did on the programming is we had said, let's go back to share screen. Share screen. Okay. So we had said that um, the tank was the most important. So I set that as priority two. This is priority two. The domestic meter is my in between. So I set that at priority four. And then I set the pond at priority six. So two, four, and six. And the reason I did that, I left some room in between them um, because I, I want the ability to move them around and, and change the priority if I need to. Okay. And so they don't have to be priority one, two, three. They could be, they could be priority six, seven, eight, you know, any, any order you want. And it doesn't, Water source one doesn't have to be priority one. It could be any priority I need. So that was the ranking. I said priority source two, three, priority two, four, and six. So that was the first thing we did. Okay. And then we set up an empty condition. So on the tank, I set an empty condition based off of pressure. So on the drop down for an empty condition, I have the ability to grab an em empty condition. And I said, when the pressure drops below, 0.4 PSI, um, pause or wait for 120 minutes. So I paused, I made the pause at 0.4 PSI. Well, anybody, hopefully y'all know what 0.4 PSI, that indicates uh, roughly one foot of elevation in the tank because one foot of, one, a one foot column of water uh, offers 4.433 PSI. So 0.4 was as close as my meet, my uh, base manager will grab will grab a single decimal. So one foot of water. What's kind of nice about that is I could pre-program that I didn't have to uh, measure it. I didn't have to do anything else. I just know that at 0.4 psi. So when the tank drains down to one foot of water, it's going to discontinue this water source, and it's going to wait for two hours for 120 minutes. So even if it filled back up in 10 minutes. It doesn't matter. It's not going to run. It's going to wait for two full hours anytime it dries out. The reason it's good to put some time in there is, is it kind of helps avoid cycling. Okay, so that's water. That was priority two. The next down was priority four, my domestic meter. My domestic meter was set at priority four, and I didn't have an empty condition, but I did set a water budget. My water budget, I set at 75,000 gallons and selected shutdown. So what happens is after the, it's moved on to a priority two, the, the next um, water source, it's a domestic meter. It's going to use that until it reaches 75,000 gallons. So as soon as it exceeds 75,000 gallons, it does two things. It alerts me and it shuts down the water source. So it discontinues that water source. Water, the water source two or the priority four water source is offline. What's the next, next in line? That's the pond over here. The pond, I put no restrictions on, just run the pond. Now, if I was worried about the pond draining down and um, exposing this, the suction intake, I might wanna use some sort of an empty condition on that one. There's nobody else. And if the pond is ever offline, I have no water and we don't get a water at all. But that might be, you know, if I don't want to burn up my pump, that would be one way of stopping it. So the, the sequence, though, is, is so let's say we're using the pond. That's the lowest priority. And the 30-day month rolls over and the, the water budget res, resets. Well, it's going to move back to the domestic meter as soon as the domestic meter is, has water budget for the month. Well, what happens if the rain catchment fills back up or right well then it will move back to that one so it, it could move back and forth as needed but we'll always it will always check the tank 
And then if the tank is, is empty, it will move to the meter. And when the meter exceeds its budget, it moves to the pond, one, two, three. Now, what I, I thought I was gonna demonstrate for you was, and this is why I left space in there, I made it two, priority two, priority four, priority six, is that pond. I mentioned the pond, the reason they aren't using it is because they don't have good filtration. If they could invest in the filtration and clean up that pond water, they might move that pond water up in priority and make it priority three, insert it between the tank and the domestic meter. It can still stay at the water source number that it is. That doesn't matter. Just change the priority and then it would uh, use the pond um, and then only use the domestic meter as a backup. So we could change them as needed, uh, prioritizing them around. It gives us lots of flexibility. Um, the one thing that I didn't talk about was, uh, or that I didn't bring in, in my case study was a soil moisture sensor on this one. So what might happen on the pond situation is if I was worried the pond uh, or if the pond ever uh, ran low and it was going to expose the pump intake or I was going to have some cavitation, I, I mean, a soil moisture sensor would be perfect on that one. Um, you know, it would probably be the simplest version is the, the level drops down and just then stop the pump. And then I wouldn't have any, any water sources to use. So lots of options on there. Um, and we can mix and match. But and the other thing about the, the rain catchment, one last thing to think about is I might have a rainy season and then I might have a dry season. So there might be nine months, six months of the year where there is never water in that catchment tank. It will check it. It'll check it every single time. And if, there, if there's not water in it, it moves to the next priority down. So we could have three tanks. Say so tank one, tank two, tank three. Does tank one have any water? No. How about tank two? No, it doesn't. Tank three? Yeah, it does. Let's use it. And we could move down the line. So many options on water sources. So I apologize that I didn't have uh, the ability to share my control my controllers. That was going to be my goal today, but kind of I'm happy with myself that I was able to just kind of roll with the roll with the punches, if you would, on this one, and keep it going. So if there's anything that you wanted to throw out in the chat, I'd love to hear you know how you've used um, water sources. I'll I'll take a look through the chat, see if there's anything in here. But we're just about wrapping up. We got another couple of minutes before we're done. So yeah, Greg's comment on the the reclaimed water that's definitely um, a, there's a lot of restrictions that come on with that, uh, you know, restrictions on when you can use it, how it can be used. Um, the, oh, another, nobody's brought this up yet, but, um, this has come up in some of my training classes is that I mentioned my, in my case study, where we're using a, um, a domestic water supply. So city water and a pond. Well, if we're using the same main line, there's a cross connection potential there, right? So you, you, of course you need to meet your local plumbing codes to make sure that there's a, some sort of a gap or air gap or a, a cross connection device to prevent that, that contamination between the devices. But that's, you've got to meet that one. So whatever your water sources, or especially if you're using reclaimed water and city water, I know in my market, when, um, when reclaimed water or recycled water is being used, they make them do a once or twice, once a year or biannual um, leak down test to make sure that there's no connection between that uh, recycled water, reclaimed water and the domestic supply. Cause that could be catastrophic to have that be drinking recycled toilet water. We don't want that. Okay, that's what we got for today. So glad you could join us for Tech Talk Tuesday. As always, take a look at um, the HydroPoint Baselines uh, system webpage. You can find links to our uh, previous Tech Talks. You can also sign up for them. You can also find them on YouTube. So, and then lots of other content that I keep putting on YouTube. Um, every week I'm creating new videos on YouTube, uh, tutorials, how to um, messages and alerts and all that. So that's what we've got for today. I wanted to thank you all for joining me. We will see you next time on our Tech Talk Tuesday. Take care all. Bye-bye.